so your music's mixed, mastered, exported, and ready to be distributed. So let me show you exactly how to use the Ditto Release Builder. So you've logged in, you've hit dashboard, you hit music, and now you're ready to release. So the first steps are, depending on what kind of account you have and what type of release you're gonna put out, is to click the directed one. So for me, I'm gonna go with standard release. We've also got electronic slash dance music release, and that will curate your music and will bring your music to a more specific space of digital platforms. But you also have compilation slash various release, and if you're gonna utilize that, you'll have to upgrade your account. Right now as it stands, I'm on a solo account because it's just myself that I'm releasing music for. You click create new. I'm gonna give it a title, I'm gonna keep it simple. At this point, you can call it whatever you want. Keep it simple, keep it something that, you know, means something to you, link it to the music. Click create. Yeah, you can either put your real name, you can put whatever the copyright name it will be, or you can put your artist name. Then the copyright year. You may have made a song a previous year, so you'd put the year that the copyright technically started. So for me, this album, EP, or single that I created was created this year, 2021, so I'll leave that. And then here it says record labels. So this could be independent, it could be your name, or it could be a label that you've created. So in this space, I'm gonna put I Am Vital Limited. And you have the ability here to create a new label. So if we scroll down, it says, which of your planned artists do you want to release on that? Again, I've only got one, I'm paying for one for my kind of plan, but I have an opportunity here to upgrade it. So if I have a compilation album, then I have to upgrade it and I'll be able to add more artists. But even with that said, if this single or album or release, whatever it may be, has any featured artists, I can still feature these artists on the title on the project itself. So if I click here and I'll change it to featured. So then I have the ability now to choose one of the featured artists. And in this case, I may choose Jinx, for example. If I click that, now he will be a featured artist. And if you look here, you can kind of see my name. It's kind of faded out and slash featuring Jinx. So we scroll down and here's the part where we're going to work out if we're going to create artwork or if we're going to upload already made artwork. And this is where you would do it. You can either click create here or you can drag and drop or select the file from your computer or your device. And artwork requirements are so important because this is a big thing that can get your whole project, your single, your EP rejected from the stores. So it's important to make sure that it follows these small requirements. That it's a JPEG, that it's no larger than 10 megabytes, and that the dimension should be at least 3000 by 3000 pixels. That's to give you the quality. You never know where this project, this EP, this single may be shown. And you wanna know if it's expanded that everyone can see it in clarity. And also you have to make sure that your artwork does not contain any website addresses, any logos, or any reference to any kind of social media. So if we click create artwork, it gives you very easy tools to kind of make something happen and to be fair I would suggest to utilize this if you have no other option and it's something you're trying to put out and you don't have the time or the money then this is a great way to kind of get that going and there's a lot of things you can kind of do to kind of make it work so just kind of play around and see what what looks good for you and like I said this is just a tester so you can kind of see what you can do here and you can really make it your own and a lot of it's just about trial and error so once you're happy, and again, and that's just me just trying it out, you click save artwork. And best case scenario, you already have professional artwork done, so you'll click select file or you'll drag and drop. So if you come down again, you get to choose the genre. So just keep it simple for me. I would typically choose hip hop and rap. And because I do a bit of reggae slash dance soul, I'll make that my sub. And that's just to kind of keep the genres in the same space. If you're British, you'll choose English British. And if you're American, you would keep it where it is. And obviously if you're anything else, you just choose whatever fits to what you would have. So once we go down, we click next. And at this point, you need to start adding your single or the different tracks for the EP or the album. Just to keep it simple, again, I'm gonna just add one song or maybe two. So maybe I add this one. And you definitely wanna upload WAV files or MP3. WAV is definitely preferred because it's higher quality, it's lossless audio, and you'll get the best clarity out of that. But your file size should hopefully be no bigger than 200 megabytes. So let me add another one. And again, this is just for testing purposes. And typically, I've added Jinx as a feature artist. And because I've done it at the start, he's actually featured on every track but that can change and it's probably best if you're going to release an album to just keep it as a solo artist and on each individual track you'd go inside and make sure you feature the artist correctly but then you can also just take it off the important part really is to kind of 
to go through this with a fine tooth comb. So this part here is very important. So this is for platforms like TikTok and SmartLink and even Instagram. It will give you the 30 second preview. So you wanna choose the best part of the track, the part that's most enticing for you. You can move it around and you can give it a play and listen to wherever you want. And that's what you'll hear when the song's out and being previewed. So if you come down, you wanna make sure you title the track perfectly in the way that you wanna see it. This part here is if you're releasing a single with multiple tracks and there's different versions just to keep it clear and keep it precise of what each track is, especially if all the track titles are similar or name the same thing. And you have the ability again here to add or take away artists. Same at the start, you can focus on if you wanna keep the copyright holder the same, it may be different for different songs. And you also wanna focus on when the copyright technically starts for that track. Same here, you would put the year that it's published. So here it says enter the phonograph holder, which is basically the sound recording copyright holder. And you'll put again, you could put the name, you could put the artist name, or you could put the label. So it's just about keeping everything precise. This part is the most important part. If you are re-uploading or re-releasing a track from a different distributor, or potentially you had to take down a track for a reason and you're now re-uploading it, it's important here to copy over the exact same ISRC code. That way you'll keep all your streams or your playlist placements and it'll feel like the track never left or never went anywhere. Because if you put a new one or if you click auto, it will be released like a brand new track. So there'll be no affiliation to the old version of the track. So I'll come down here and this part's very important also, the explicit content. If it has bad language or bad content, it's so important to put explicit and click yes, these lyrics contain explicit content. And alternatively, if it's fine, if it's clean, if it doesn't even allude to anything negative, then definitely just click no. At the bottom here it says contributors. So this most likely be the person who composed the track, the producer, someone who played an instrument, maybe even someone who helped write part of the lyrics. You'd put their name, type here the exact role of what they did. But if you put the contributing name here, it will not initially show anywhere on Spotify or iTunes or Apple Music that it'll just be a part of the meta data. If you want a featured artist, composer or writer to be shown, you'd have to add it in this section here. And you could add another track artist and another contributor and you can keep doing this until you're content. So once you're finishing, you've added your tracks and you've named them correctly, you've added your contributors and or your featured track artists, you'll need to go down. And here's where you kind of need to understand the T's and C's. I understand my release may be rejected from stores if I don't correctly label tracks as explicit that contain swear words or obscenities. I am authorized to distribute this music to stores and territories I select. So that's just to say that you have the permission and that's so important. I'm not using any other artist's name in my name, song titles or album title without their approval. Cause again, you know, you don't want to be trolling other artists just to get plays and streams. Cause realistically that'll just get your project rejected and potentially get your account banned. So the last part on this page is covers and copyright material. If your release contains any copyrighted material such as samples, please upload the documentation providing you own the copyright to the audio. Without the required licensing document, music containing copyrighted material may be rejected by stores. And that's the worst thing, okay? So it says continue without uploading copyright documentation or upload. So if you've got no covers and you know it's all your work and you've got all the permission, then you can continue without doing anything. But if you have directly taken samples Pools or you are doing a cover and you have that permission, then you would upload here and you'd drag and drop or select the files and put it in right there. But for me, I'll continue. So we go to the next page. Has this album or single been released before? And this part's important because like I said, if you are re-uploading or you're taking your music from a different distribution to this one, then it's important to kind of put that information there, say what date exactly was released prior. And for example, it could have been earlier this year and maybe it was released six months ago and you've re-released it. So it's so important to do that. But in my case, I would have to click no. So as I click no, it'll say, when do you want it to be released on a specific date? Do you want to pay the extra 40 pound to get a pre-release so it comes out as soon as possible and you have the link so you can get people to start pre-saving and pre-ordering, which will help your chances for success when it comes to chart position or when it comes to really getting that big push on the date of your release. And alternatively, you can ask for it to be released as soon as possible so it can be out within the next few days. And if this is something that's just being rushed out, pushed out or needs to come out at a certain time, that will be the best thing to do. 
but for me there's no rush or specific date and i'm gonna have maybe six to eight weeks from now because it's more important to give yourself that time to plan promote and have real good preparation for when you're releasing music so i'm gonna do it on a friday in about six seven weeks from now and if we go down it goes would you like to add country restrictions and limit the availability of your release? So maybe if you're working with a company or a label or if it's part of a sample, you may have some restrictions on certain jurisdictions in certain parts of the world. So if you did, you just select which territories you don't want it to be released in or accessed. But again, for me, I wouldn't need that, so I'll press no. And then the next part is, would you like to register your music for national or worldwide charts? If you press yes there's a fee if you want to do it worldwide 69 if you want to just do it in these sectors then it's 25 pound each again maybe this time i'm not too worried about that so i'll just press no and i'll move forward so this part is track pricing and it says how much would you like to charge for each track so i mean you can choose that price keep it cheap keep it expensive keep it in the middle for me i want to get the the best out of all the work i've done so i'm gonna keep it at 99 pence and that's for anyone who's actually buying it from amazon or from itunes specifically and then for the digital streaming stores i always suggest it's best to just keep it as all i mean but you have the option to only release it to download stores or only streaming or have custom and you just pick which ones you want but i mean you know you're making music you want it to go to the world so all stores and what's really cool is it says here future and upcoming stores should we send this release to new stores automatically when they become available so i always say just click yes because at the end of the day you want your music to get around to the world yeah and once you've done that in the right corner it's updating your release making sure that all these stores are selected so then after that it's about adding this release to the basket and going through and potentially it should be free if you paid for your yearly membership but again if you've had those add-ons and i mean add-ons like register for the chart or potentially you know it coming out as soon as possible then when you get to that end state you will see those add-ons added to your total amount and then you would be able to pay but by paying for one of them it lets you know a little bit more information you know itunes express uh, it says here estimated to go live friday which technically would be midnight tonight so that's how quickly you can actually get released but it's just all about you know understanding giving real expectations with these things and just you know really preparing and giving yourself time when it comes to releasing so at that point I would click pay by PayPal, pay by card, or if I've got credit on my account, I can apply with your credit and then I'm good to go. So once you confirm and process your order, then that's exactly how you use the old release builder to distribute your music to the world.